Oh, hi there. I'm Scott Gree from Move 8 Real Estate and I'm going to uh, give you some guidance on how we value a property and this particular property here is in Davidson's Mains in Edinburgh and um, yeah, let me show you around. Come in, come in. I would sit down uh, or, or have a chat with an owner about the, the, the journey, what they've done to the property. That conversation at the beginning that we have with the client kind of really just sort of sits, sits us down, gives us a good picture of what we're looking at achieving and then I would ask a client to take me on a tour of the property. So with this particular property I would be asking the, the owner to show me around the, 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 the ground floor. So I would effectively just follow, follow those guys. But in this case, uh, the owner isn't here. So, um, so this is a front room here, uh, a multi-purpose room. Um, could be used as a guest bedroom, currently set up as a kind of playroom. It's a double brick extension. Um, which very different to how they build them today. So I would say that this is older than the extension that just sort of sits at the rear property. So I had two extensions and again, quite key to the information that I need versus um, working out the value because I would also find out how long the client that owns this property, how long they've been here, did they buy this with this here or, you know, etc. Because it all kind of lays into to, to, to that for, for them. So yeah, no, this is great. Double glazing, uh, dual aspect and uh, nice modern radios. You can tell that it's been really well looked after. So this will be the family bathroom. Again, very typical with this age of property. The bathrooms are on the ground floor. Uh, this is probably built around 1930, this house, and then from the 50s, these moved upstairs. So got everything you need, electric shower, Velux uh, window there, which obviously would have had a window once before uh, here, but they've put it there as when the extensions come on. So going through into this space here, we have another bedroom, um, good size double bedroom, double glazing, you get good sizes uh, of rooms of this house type. And behind you there is an ensuite, nice and modern. The, the contemporary aspect of that suggests that that was done when the extension off the rear was put onto the property. Back into the living space. I would then come and have a little look at this space again in a little bit more detail with my kind of uh, surveying hat on. So I would revisit it. Obviously we'd come in here originally. Uh, things that I'll look for, um, you can see with the age of the design uh, and also the frames, the colours, etc. This is a much more modern extension than the one that was put on the front. One thing that's been quite important over the last couple of years are the increase in building costs. So when we're factoring in valuations with that have got extensions involved, we're trying to make that um, uh, as accurate as, as possible. Nice modern kitchen. Um, you can see here that it's uh, quite a good spec as well. It's uh, I think this will be quartz, looking at it. Uh, work surfaces, nice modern style. At this point, it looks like as well, I don't notice any radiators, so I'd be asking, does it have an underfloor um, heating system? And if that was electric or uh, what we call a wet system, which is off the, the boiler. Because again, uh, a little bit of a luxury, but the underfloor heating systems, particularly if it's a wet system, do cost a bit more money than the electric ones to put in. So we obviously try and factor what we can into the valuation as well. We do get asked a lot if you know things like that do add value. Um, and we do our best to try and factor, factor that in. They don't necessarily always make profit for a client, but equally it wouldn't be fair for us to discard that investment that a client's made in something like that when we're trying to factor in what their property is worth in today's market as well. So we'll just nip upstairs to the, the two bedrooms, um, I believe, and then we'll have a little look outside and then that would pretty much um, be all I would need initially before sitting down and having a wee chat with a customer. So again, two double bedrooms. So this property then becomes a four bedroom, potentially um, currently three active three bedroom, um, two public or four bedroom, one public with two bathrooms. So again, very, very, very popular for the family kind of market that likes to buy in this area. It looks like it's been modernized. I mean, these properties are coming up for a hundred years old. So um, it's well cared for. And then the second bedroom facing the rear. This will be the cozier bedroom because of the sunlight. The lovely views over the back there toward Davidson's Mains and the primary school. 
um, and again comfortably another double bedroom. So we'll just go back down and have a little look at the, the rear garden. This is nice and secluded, south facing, west facing, so the sun comes right across as well. So again, really attractive um, uh, property this for, for, for the market. If it was going and speaking to a client about the value today, uh, and they were intending to sell today, we would have access to the ESPC members portal. Now, this is probably the best portal to use for getting really live information as to the behavior of buyers in the area. Obtaining home reports and that valuation process is very much, very similar, has been for um, since the introduction of it, since 2008, nine. However, what we can see when we look at the portal because of the information that's in there and, the, and, and when it's shared to the member firms as well, we can actually see live behaviors of um, sales prices over the home reports and all of that information is in one place for us. We have access to that and that really gives us guidance and well, all ESPC member firms, I think guidance that really give buyers a really clear understanding as to what's achievable and also in some cases what's not. If I'm in a position after seeing a property that I can sit down and go through that rationale and explain that to a client, I will. Because part of that valuation then leads into the journey of what it would cost a client to sell, which would be cost of home reports, marketing, ESPC, um, advertising, and, uh, and also the estate agency um, costs for, for, for a successful sale and, and, and legal work. So all of that then is part of what we do as well. But also I think the key element from my point of view at this side is, is, is accuracy, giving a figure that is where we think a surveyor, because there's nothing worse than a, sur a, a seller getting a figure and then a survey comes in and if there's a big variance on that figure I just don't think it's a great way to start kind of like a transaction relationship. Still those resources with the ESPC sales data etc we look at what's can potentially on the market because one of the things that can influence a property for value is who it will be competing against at any given time. Um, so each property is treated very subjectively by ourselves when we're looking at um, where we think it will sit, particularly strategy. So your home report is going to effectively be um, the, the, the surveyor's valuation, but we would give guidance on strategy based on those factors and that incorporates timelines when, you know, because we sometimes have, uh, say for example, if uh, the owner of this house has an offer accepted on another, that agent might only give them eight weeks to get this on and get a buyer for their own. So there's all different scenarios that will help us give that client the right advice at the right time and place to get them uh, achieving the result that they want.